Welcome to the study meeting of March 23rd, 2022. Uh, we have all members of the council present with us here this evening. Uh, this is a study meeting. No votes will be taken tonight, but motions will be offered by the members of the city council to either approve, deny, or refer a particular matter to a committee meeting. If it is referred to a committee meeting, it will be called up in a smaller meeting for further study. Items that are moved to a approval or denial tonight will be on the next regular council meeting agenda where they will receive a vote. At this time, I will go to the city council. Does anybody have any announcements at this time? I have one, Mr. President. Mr. Barr? Uh, just briefly, as, as my colleagues know, I'm at the rec center at 6 a.m. on Wednesdays and Fridays. And um, one of the things I've just noticed is that the, the attendance just hasn't, it's, it's still pretty light in there. And I just want to tell the city of Livonia, like, it's okay to come back. Um, and, and the group that's there is all friendly, and, and I just love to see it vibrant there again in the mornings. And the real reason that I'm saying this is because our basketball crew is a little short. <laughs> and the guys challenged me. They said, can you make an announcement to the city that we need more guys at 6 a.m. on Wednesday and Friday mornings who want to come out and play? So Jackson, I'm just telling you, you told me you didn't think I'd do this, and I did it. <laughs> Mr. President. Mr. Donovan. I'd like to add to Councilmember Barr's uh, comments uh, Maybe if he wasn't such a great basketball player, more people would come and attend. <laughs> I, I think Mr. Barr should run through the list of injuries he's received uh, playing <laughs> basketball in the last couple of years. And maybe that's why the people don't come out. Uh, anybody else on the council? Um, okay, any audience communication at this time? Is, does anybody want to address the council for any reason that is not on the, the uh, study agenda tonight? I see none, so we will move right to new business. Item number one is a request to waive the city's noise ordinance from Ian Edgar from Anastasia and Katie's Coffee Shop to host a car show with a DJ in the parking lot at 19215 Merriman Road on Saturday, May 14th, 2022 from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Good evening, sir. State your name and address for the record, please. Hello, um, my name is Ian Edgar. Um, I live at um, uh, 28828 uh, Westfield Street um, here in Livonia. Awesome. Do you want to tell us about the car show, what the plans are? Um, yeah. In fact, um, uh, last year I came before you to seek permission to host a car show. Which, which you granted. Um, unfortunately, uh, we had to cancel that show due to lack of participation. So you're seeking it to do, the, do it again this year? Yep. Okay. So anybody from council? Mr. Have President. Uh, well, Ms. McIntyre and then Mr. Donovan. Um, good evening, Mr. Edgar. It's so nice to see you here again and Good thank evening. you for presenting your item and thank you for the great work you all do at Anastasia and Katie's. It would be my pleasure to offer an approving resolution for this on consent, which means you won't have to come back, but you're always welcome to come back. And also I'd like to take this opportunity just to remind this community to stop by Anastasia and Katie's for coffee, for breakfast, for lunch, right? And could you, you you're open at 7 a.m., right? Yep. Until? Until about oh, uh, 2, 2.30. 2 or 2.30. And can you remind, uh, let's see, if is the address in here? Yep, here's your address. Uh, Anastasia and Katie's, and you can tell me if I get this right, 19215 Merriman Road. Yep. On the west side of Merriman, just north of Seven Mile. Exactly. Right? <laughs> and what's, what's the motto at Anastasia and Katie's? We are good and strong. Excellent. So um, we're excited about the car show, and we encourage everyone in the community to come by and get some of your delicious coffee. And again, I've, I've had your lunches, I've had your breakfast, I've had your coffee, and it's all fantastic. Oh, well, th thank you for the endorsement. You're welcome. <laughs> Sometimes she's had too much of your coffee. And yeah. we got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. No. We, you've said it all and you've done it all well and we're looking forward to the car show. Uh, you have an approving on consent so you don't have to come back for the next meeting. Okay, thank you. Just one more thing. Thank you. Uh, maybe come back before, our, before the 14th to one of our meetings. Okay. Uh, you're always welcome to speak at audience communication 
and it's a good opportunity to remind the community about your car show. All right. All right. Um, oh, uh, one more thing. Um, I do have some packets of information for you guys. Um, would you guys mind if, if I pass these off to Lori Miller? Not, not at all. You could, e you could even hand them to Mr. Zelensic, and we can trust him to make sure that they get to where they need to go. Usually. Usually we can trust him. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for your time, and, and hopefully I will see you guys at the coffee shop. Um, uh, if not before the 14th, see you guys at the car show. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. You. Have a good night. Have a good night. Take care. Mm -hmm. Item number two, a request for consideration of a proposed ordinance amendment from the Civil Service Department to add chapter 2.98 fire and, excuse me, police and fire revised retirement plan to title two of the Livonia Code of Ordinances as amendment, as amended. Good evening. Good evening, everyone, um, and thank you for having me here. Uh, per the negotiations between the police and fire bargaining units, we implemented a new defined benefit retirement plan. Um, the ordinance represents the negotiated provisions of the new revised defined benefit plan. Um, it was drafted by our retirement attorney um, or our retirement law firm that handles uh, the retirement. Sorry, it's a little redundant. Um, they base it off of the retirement ordinance 2.96 uh, for the defined benefit plan. It's amended as required um, by the uh, bargaining unit agreements and it incorporates all the different provisions um, that have been updated and modified. Um, we've had it reviewed by Greg Schultz, our labor attorney, by Mike Slater, um, the finance director, and uh, the Civil Service Commission has reviewed it as well. So we ask you to please um, send it off to legal um, so that they can take a look at it and, and see if it's uh, a good change for our ordinance. Thank you. So I have to ask you what your name and title is because you're not you're not training anymore. Yes, I'm sorry. You're the official head not of the Denise. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Janine Leibel. I'm the uh, Human Resources Director. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Chair. Mr. Barr beat you to it, Ms. Toy. Okay. So Janine, does this mean that Denise is actually retired now? Is this not? <laughs> I'm just teasing. So well, I really love working with Denise and I'm she is actually retiring. She's been helping us a great deal, fill in um, some yeah. of the, for some of our uh, empty positions. But I, she is actually really going to retire now. Yeah, I, I know that. Uh, I was just <laughs> teasing because I think this is your first time. Is, or am I wrong? Is this your first time presenting an item to us since Maybe by, on your own? Second, I don't okay. know. But I'll act like it's anyway, my first time. If anyway, that works. <laughs> anyway, welcome and good to have you. But I'll offer this for approving for consent if there's no objection. Any objection? Mr. Morgan? Yes, I actually have a question here. Okay. Um, I, I'm kind of curious, this, uh, this new ordinance change, um, has this already been, is, is this something the city came up with, or was the unions involved in this? Um, oh, is it? I'm sorry, go ahead. So I, I'd like to know exactly what, uh, and I see there's a whole array of changes here, but um, what does it actually affect? Does it affect? The pensions, because it's talking about pensions, it's talking about a lot of different things here. So, okay. so um, yes, it, it will affect, or it puts into effect the defined benefit plan. For a while, our police and fire, um, we had moved away from a defined benefit plan, which is a, a pension plan, um, and then it was a defined contribution plan. Um, in Recruiting for our new officers it, for both departments, uh, we found that the market was saying that a defined benefit plan and not a contribution was much preferable. Since changing to that, we have found that we've been able to recruit. Um, both of our departments are held up in great esteem by our surrounding communities. They have asked us to stop, um, or ask, you know, they've asked us for our information. What are you offering, um, and can you stop poaching our people? So that's a nice compliment for us, but um, it does it has changed the benefit plan um, so that it's a defined. I'm so sorry. I'm going to just keep saying the same words again. So if I can jump okay, in here for a second. Maybe it would be a question for the city attorney yeah, more so yeah. because um, I'm somewhat familiar with this. And does this actually. What this does, this takes the agreement that this that council approved between 
Thank you. This took the agreement that was approved by the council that, uh, that the council approved between the city and the unions and puts it into a ordinance form. Because okay. we have to have an ordinance in order to have the defined benefit contribution. Is this moving forward or is this going back? <laughs> it, so what it's, I believe it's, it might, <laughs> I think it kind of goes back in time because I think we've been kind of operating have, under yeah. that. We have the plan in place. The ordinance has to sort of catch up and be revised to just incorporate it. It's designed to reflect the, the intention of the union and the city of when it began. So that, that, that intention. For the new pension program right. or the old pension program? New the pension. new one. New pension the old program. one has already been um, codified and is fine. Yeah, so it's okay. just changes in to, to make this so, a little bit easier, I think, what's going to happen is we're going to send this to the law department, they're gonna come up with a proposed ordinance change that we'll see and we'll be able to see exactly what was edited. Then it'll go to first reading and then second reading, then it'll be voted on. So we'll have ample opportunity to actually see what the changes are. Okay. And Mr. Gordon, right. if you want to call us, we'd be happy to talk to you clearly. Are you sure? Positive. All right, thank you. All right, we have approving on consent. Any audience communication on that? I see none. We'll move on to number three. And I think you're all set for the evening. Thank, thank you very you. much. Uh, request to approve an intergovernmental agreement between the Charter County of Wayne and the City of Livonia through the Department of Parks and Recreation for improvements at Botsford Pool and Clement Circle Pool. Mr. Davis, welcome. Thank you, Council President Jolly. Ted Davis representing Parks and Recreation. I come bearing gifts tonight from Wayne County. They we're asking Council to approve an IGA in the amount of $158,973. I'd like to thank Commissioners Marecki and Knizic for this as well. Uh, they've been good supporters of Parks and Recreation and our projects. We're looking next year to do Botsford Pool, installation of new fencing and pool mechanical structures in Clement Circle, continue with adding pool equipment and actually adding additional security cameras as well. I'm happy to answer any questions council might have on this. Mr. Chair. Ms. Toy. I'll ask for an approving on these, but I had a question for Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis, um, Sheldon Center Pool, any news or thoughts on that? Uh, a lot of it's <coughs> gonna depend on staffing levels. Right now, we are not anticipating opening this year for Sheldon, um, and that is solely based on our staffing right now. Uh, okay. We're in a better spot than we were last year, which we're thankful for, but I think <coughs> part of it is probably we need to do a better job of managing expectations. A very successful summer for us would be to open up Clement Circle without capacity restrictions, the rec center indoor pool without capacity restrictions, and then have Botsford open uh, as much as possible. I would consider that an incredibly successful summer since, again, a normal goal for us would be 100 lifeguards. We're, in, we're hoping we get 60. Wow. We're at about 40 right now, which means we'd have to add 20 and retain everyone. So again, 60 would be, so 60% staffing is our goal from full staffing, so Appreciate again, I think we're, that's, that's been our, our focus has been Clement Circle and uh, the rec center and then Botsford and then Sheldon. Uh, we're certainly disappointed that it doesn't look like we will open Sheldon this year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Any objections to that going on consent? Not at all. Okay. Item number. Thank you. Well, I'll say audience communication. I see none. Number four, a request to adopt a resolution proclaiming Friday, April 29, 2022 as Arbor Day in the city of Livonia, Michigan. Coming to us from our friend Bill Craig and the Tree City Committee uh, and Mr. Doug Moore, Assistant Director of Public Works, to be celebrated this year at 2.30 p.m. at Coolidge Elementary School at 30500 Curtis Street. I don't have the date, oh, excuse me, April 29th, I'm sorry. Yes. Mr. Moore. Evening Council, Doug Moore with Department of Public Works. This is our annual request to proclaim uh, April 29th, Friday, Arbor Day, and we will be at Coolidge Elementary. At approximately 2.30, when I went back through my notes, we were supposed to be there in 2020, and unfortunately that didn't happen, and they wanted it a little bit later in the day, and we have an appointment set with the principal right after spring break, so it could be pushed a little later in the day. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Any motions from the council? I'd be happy to offer an approving for consent. Um, <clears throat> as the council representative for the tree committee, I can say that uh, the tree committee does amazing work and um, we might be bringing back the tree costume this year that has been in the past. Um, not gonna tell you who's gonna wear it, but it might be there. 
So please attend for not only Arbor Day, but maybe seeing some fun costumes. Okay, and that's an approving, is that for consent? Yes, please. Okay, you know what? I think that the trees deserve a vote and everybody go on the record to like the vote. So I'm gonna object to a consent and we'll put that on the regular. All right, number five. Award of contract from the Department of Public Works for the 2022 to 2025 Municipal Park Mowing Program, which involves approximately 136 acres of parks, cemetery, and fire station property from budgeted funds. Mr. Moore. Evening, Council. Uh, this was advertised in the Observer and on Mitten. We had a mandatory pre bid meeting on February 16th. The bid opening was on February 22nd. We received four bids and we had eight contractors at the meeting. Uh, the contracts to mow 32 parks, three fire stations, two cemeteries. It's approximately 130 acres of turf. Uh, the low bidder meeting specifications is Scooby's Lawn Care out of Garden City. We did check their municipal references and their equipment and they seem up to the task. Uh, we're asking council to approve the contract, the four year contract for $148,456 or $37,114 a year. Dollars or Scooby Stacks? Depends. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're thinking about that one. <laughs> that, was, that was like teed up. Yeah. <laughs> I'll offer this for approving for consent if there's no objection. Okay, we have an approving for consent. Any audience communication? Mr. Moore, I got a question about this. Yes. So we are contracting the cutting of all this grass. Yes. Can you tell us very briefly what the procedure is for your department to oversee and supervise that this is actually getting done? We have a foreman, we have two foremen and the supervisor and myself and usually check, one of us goes out once a week and follows it almost daily and follows around. When we get their schedule, we have it between the four or five supervisors and we go out and make sure that they're where they're at. We ask them where they're going to be in the, in the program during the week and then we'll go out and check and make sure it's getting done. With Scooby Snacks. With Scooby All Snacks. All right, thank you very much, sir. That's approving for consent. We have no audience communication. Thank you. Thank you. Number six, award of contract from the engineering division for the 2022 sidewalk replacement program, contract 22G, Mr. Zelensic. I think Mr. Moore forgot to preference his answer with rut row, but uh, <laughs> I'll start with uh, my. That would have made it perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start with my, my uh, agenda item tonight from the engineering department. Uh, good evening, city council <laughs> president and city council members. Um, as you know, we have our annual sidewalk repair program as part of the millage to help fix some of the uh, street trees that uh, have heaved up, heaved up the sidewalk. We're asking uh, for city council's approval. We went out on mitten for bids. We had six people show up for the pre-bid meeting on March 9th. We had four bids submitted on March 15th. And then Rotundo Construction is the lowest bidder at $632,935. The highest bid was $958,691.25. As part of this approval, we're asking 10,000 to be uh, given uh, separately to uh, Precision Cunning, who goes out and handles some of the uh, cuts that have occurred from some of the tree heaves. And again, looking to build the residence in of March of 2023. So work will start in July, after July 8th, go through September, and the residents will receive a bill in the uh, following year in March uh, and have the June to pay that. And then obviously if there's a hardship, they can go on city, uh, city taxes and there'll be information from the treasurer's office for that. But we have to answer any questions. And we have Mark Rotundo from Rotunda Construction in the audience. They've done this for several years and know the routine and we appreciate their, their bid, uh, giving the taxpayers the best possible um, price for the work to be done. Mr. President. Mr. Donovan. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to offer an approving on consent as much as I'd love to see them come back to our regular meeting. But uh, I think they do a phenomenal job for our community. I know multiple times uh, on my time of council, residents have reached out with certain concerns and uh, the company has sent representatives directly from their, the ownership to, to uh, address any concerns. And, and that's the kind of uh, workmanship that our residents deserve. And I think this, this uh, company uh, will give that to our city and, and I'm happy to offer improving on consent. Any objections? Any audience communication on this matter? There's none. Item number seven, award of contract from the engineering division for the 2022 lane line marking program, contract 22-H. Mr. Zelensky. 
Again, we went for bids on this project. Bids were received on March 8th. We had two bidders. The two known bidders usually that uh, do this type of work is PK Contracting and JV Contracting. JV Contracting was our contractor last year for just under 95. This year we have PK Contracting, lowest bid at 93,367.50. The second lowest bid was uh, JV at 107,200. So obviously you can see a significant cost savings there. Looking for your approval to go out obviously before uh, late August, September, and before school starts and get the lane line markings nice and bright for uh, our kids as they go back to school and get ready for uh, uh, lane line markings to be throughout the city done. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm here to answer those, but hopefully uh, just again, uh, annual program we do to make sure the city's safe and people can enjoy uh, the crosswalks. Council? I'll offer an approving. Ms. Toyer offers an approving. Is that, for, is that for consent? Certainly. Anybody else on council? Any audience communication? That concludes our scheduled program for this evening. Uh, any last minute announcements from the council? Any audience communication? We have none. I think we can safely show uh, seven votes to suspend the meeting, to end the meeting, knowing that we'll be back here again. No. In spirit, in spirit, <laughs> we'll adjourn. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night, Livonia. Happy birthday, Kathleen. Thank you.